Hello again, it's Mark Summers from Summers Technical Services. Uh, we're going to continue on with our sheet metal design we're doing. Uh, we've made the part model and now we're going to make an assembly model so we can show those pin nuts that are mounted to that front flange there. So let's get started. Alright, here's my uh, part model that I uh, started last time. I went ahead and added the rest of these features so you can see the holes are all done with ordinate dimensions like uh, the ones I did on that back face there so you can see just use ordinate dimensions on all these features and uh, also I've added uh, the holes up here those have ordinate dimensions I've added these fillets and so there's four 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 and two so there's 18 fillets put those all in one big fillet feature because they're all the same size uh, and the chamfers I think I put on there last time so now we're ready to make an assembly model and so you can see I've made the uh, bracket itself the bare bracket is a dash 01 part uh, the assembly will be a dash 10 assembly and I need that pim nut and so we got to go find the right size pim nut for your particular material thickness mine's a CLS dash 632-2 and the fillets or the uh, the uh, thickness of your part is going to drive the shank code on that part number. In my case the shank code is dash 2 and yours may be the same but I suspect it might be different. So these things are called self-clenching nuts and the manufacturer of the ones I use mostly is uh, a company called Pin Engineering and here they are right here and so pimnut.com so I'm going to go to their website there's other companies that make these self clenching fasteners but the idea is that the material is too thin to tap a hole into it to mount my brackets and my switches I'm going to be mounting so instead we're going to use this uh, self clenching nut we're going to drill a through hole and we're going to press this on there and make it a permit it's pretty much just like a nut is permanently affixed to the piece of sheet metal. So we're going to go literature and we're going to go self clenching nuts. Uh, CLS is the series and we're going to come down in here and you're going to find a sheet. This has lots of good information. Here's a sheet with the part number codes. And so CLS just means, if you look at the data sheet here, CLS is a stainless steel self clenching nut. Uh, 632 is the thread size and so here the thread code is 632 that means it's a 632 threaded hole in the middle and the dash 2 in my case is the shank code so you're going to come over here and choose either a 0, a 1, a 2, or a 3 depending on your material thickness over here so uh, you want to have the longest shank code you can get, but you don't want the shank so tall that it sticks all the way through the part. So pick the longest shank dimension that you can without sticking all the way through. And in my case, that was a uh, dash 2 shank code. And you can also come over here and click on uh, CAD models, and you can download the CAD model of your particular part. Uh, once you figure out which part you need. Okay, so that's how to define the PIM nut. So I'm going to start a new assembly and I'm going to do an inch assembly and I'm going to place my dash 01 bracket and there it is right there. Oops. There it is right there and I'll place it and like I always do, I got to float it and then fix it so I'm going to right click and float now it's loosey-goosey and now I'm going to line the planes up and I put those planes in logical locations so the front assembly plane is going to mate with the front plane of the part and approve that and then I'm going to top to top this is a normal thing you do for most all your assemblies just make the assembly planes to the first part and there's right to right all right, so now I need to place my PIM nuts, and so I'll say insert components, 
and I'll go browse and go find my PIM nut that I downloaded from the uh, PIN engineering website. Make sure you use the file name needs to be the actual part number so it works on our uh, drawing that we're going to make. And so you can see this thing is going to sit flat here on my on my uh, face here. And you can see it's got kind of a canted piece there with some serrations that aren't shown, but they're on the real part. And when you press that in, it just squeezes in, displaces the aluminum or steel, whatever your part is, and it makes a permanent part of the assembly. And so these things are mounted on different sides. Uh, the one in the middle here we'll put on first. So I'll mate this face, control click that face, mate. And that looks correct. And now I'm going to mate that cylindrical feature with that cylindrical feature. And since it's a uh, can still rotate, I'll lock rotation like I like to do with my fasteners. So that one's defined. Now we can do that same thing over again two more times, or we can use this command. I don't know if I've shown you this or not, but it's kind of a cool command. So I'm going to go insert components, but I'm not going to insert components. I'm going to copy with mates. What that allows me to do is to leverage the mates I made on the first one to use for the second and third. So the first thing it says, what do you want to copy with mates? Well, I already pre-selected the PIM nut, so there it is right there. And so I'm going to say next. And now it's saying, what do you want to do about this face that you made it to a minute ago? Do you want to repeat that mate? And I'm going to say, no, I want it to, this one I want to mate on this side. And then it's asking me about the second mate. Do you want to still mate it to that cylindrical feature here? My answer is going to be no. I want to mate it to this cylindrical feature here. And it does it. And I need to flip that one the other way. I'll do that in a minute. So I'll approve. I guess I can flip it right here. There we go. So that flipped it. So I'll approve that one. And now it's ready for the next one. Do you still want to use this back face? No. I, want to, I still want to change it to this face. And then over here it says, uh, do I want to repeat that one again? No, I want to repeat this one. And again, it flips it. I need to flip this mate that I did here. And now it is not happy. Hmm, I got that one wrong, didn't it? Uh, so let's delete that one. Try this last one again. So select this guy. Copy with mates. I pre-selected it. There it is. I want to repeat that. Yeah, I want to check that checkbox repeat. And I don't want to repeat that, but I want to repeat that. So I'm not sure what I did wrong the first time. So you approve that, and then when you're done with the command, you get out of the command. All right, so now I've got my assembly model with three PIM nuts. And I want to save this as, actually, when you save it for the first time, I've never saved this before, so you just do file save. First time you save it, it's going to ask for a file name. And I want to call it NRG. There's the class number. There's my student number. There's the assignment number. And, yeah, I want to call it dash 10. Okay. So now we can... We've got our part model made, we've got the assembly made, so the next video we'll talk about making the drawing, putting the bill of materials and balloons on there. And so we'll see you in the next video.